All right, thanks for joining me as we talk about the hidden traumas of debt. We are gonna talk about money today and where our beliefs about money came. Maybe there's fears and insecurities around money. Maybe you don't quite feel safe around money. You're scared, you don't know how to manage it. Maybe you spend too much, you spend too little. Maybe you give it all away. We're gonna just dive into this complex talk today about the hidden traumas of debt and where it came from. And I'm Phaedra Antioco and I'm an occupational therapist. I'm a, a somatic experiencing practitioner. I also have surgical hands, so my hands can help you unravel your nervous system, unravel the tight fascia in your body, release scars, uh, injuries, pain. I can pretty much help anyone in pain. And you might be asking, well, why are you talking about money today and debt? Well, let me tell you, this is one of those many layers that are under people's pain, physical pain or emotional pain, okay? And if you take a moment to think about a real stressful financial situation, and maybe that you've had, and maybe it's happening right now, or maybe you lost a lot of money, or maybe you used to have a lot of money and you're not having it right now, or maybe you're comfortable and you're feeling safe finally for once. I want you to take that in. And I want you to notice what happens internally inside your body when you're either not having enough money, afraid of money, or you, you feel safe and you're comfortable. So we need to look at that. And someone's writing in here now that my husband passed away two years ago. I'm 62 and scared to death. That's a strong statement. We're going to go over some things today that hopefully you can tell yourself and help work through. I'm scared to death trying to take care of my finances. We had to file bankruptcy five uh, years ago due to his cancer. So I haven't, um, I had to go into debt and that is so common. So you're asking, why are you talking about debt today, Phaedra? Well, so much of it is we're trying treatments. We're seeking out different things and you have to pay for all of these expenses. Then maybe you're sick and you're in pain and you can't work or you're too depressed and you can't get your motivation up to go out and do those things. So I want to talk about the root cause of that today, but also hope, offer you hope and inspiration so that you can make those changes on your own. Because it is possible, you can't give up, but as a somatic experiencing practitioner, and I'm more than that, I just... <clears throat> I've had such complex issues in my own life and the trials and tribulations. I'm, I'm just a resourceful person and try to find ways to get me out of the hole that I'm in, get out of the ditch I'm in. And there's this inner fire in me and I can't give it to you. It's just something, whether I was born with it or through my, my challenges in life, I was able to develop, but I just don't give up. And a lot of it takes place in the mind. And I'm just going to read the quote that I had Hopefully I will read it. Uh, in the email tonight that I sent out, um, ironically, Jim, it's by Ann Rand, and uh, money is only a tool. It will take you wherever you wish, but it will not replace you as the driver. So you've got to get your head on straight and you've got to get conviction in you that you're going to help and get yourself out of this mess. And if this stuff resonates with you, I am offering a small group intensive coming up after we finish this series for four people, just four people. It's going to be a two hour intensive working with me each week for four weeks in a small group, you and three other people. And the price of that is $9.97. Okay, so that's just to give you a boost because if your nervous system isn't right, if you're scared, if you're afraid, if you're in shutdown mode, we've got to deal with getting out of that freeze response or that anger and that fighting, or I'm just spending all this money, I'm putting it on a credit card because I don't care, I'm running away from it. That's the flight. So we've got fight, flight, or freeze. So let's look at your money issues today in that category. Is it a fight response? Is it to get angry at your husband so you're gonna go out and spend money? Or you're just gonna forget about it and you're just gonna spend, 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 or are you just stuck and you can't manage your money? You're not paying your bills because the effort to go through that big stack of envelopes on your desk will be too stressful for you. So we have to look at your nervous system. And I have learned in my, in my own treatments 
and working with my clients. And that's why people come to me because the physical therapy is not getting to the root of, oh, you're in a terrible marriage or you lost your husband and you're scared to death that you're not going to be able to survive next week. We've got to get you feeling safe in your body and give you strategies to practice so you can get out of it, out of that rut that you're in. Good. Let me just peek. Any questions? Yep. Good. And again, I was 11 years ago now, I woke up from a coma. I was driving home from work and my world changed, you guys. I was 34 days in the hospital. Talk about hospital bills, right? I was lucky that I had enough insurance and I qualified for the state Medicaid. But then I found my resources. I did have people raise money for me. About $4,000 was raised to help me live. And then I just had to struggle and work through, but I didn't have the luxury of having someone to live with and take care of me. I had to get back to work. So that inner drive was I will either die or I have to get out of this hospital bed and I have to get better. So that was the driving force that pulled me through. Got it? Okay. So let's just see, I've got tons of stuff planned today. <clears throat> And let's just talk about the average credit card debt in the United States as of June 2019. What would you guess an average American would have on their credit card? Throw it in there. Let's see what some numbers would be. What would you guess? How much debt the average American will have? Someone says 25,000. Anyone else? 2,000? It's kind of like in between there. $8,398. And that is really in the trillions if you consider the 128 million Americans, right? So good job, Kay. You're close. You win. <laughs> so basically, what does debt do for you? I know, and I could share my own stories because I just recently, uh, this past year, took a huge risk and I took out a lot of loans to pay for something. And I really checked in with myself and I said, you know, intuitively this feels right. And I'm either going to grow from it or I'm going to crash and burn, but I'll recover because I'm resilient. So that's where I'm at. And I don't know the results yet. So I will know maybe in six months from now if it was worth it. But I figured if I can't, if I don't go through this debt, I won't be able to challenge myself. I won't be able to grow. I will be stuck where I'm at and I want more than that. I wanted to grow, but the money mindset based on my childhood, where I came from, a single mother raising three kids, you know, who washed hair for a living for tips. That's what I saw growing up. And I vowed from the moment my parents got divorced, I'm going to college, I'm getting a degree. I wanted to be an interior designer. Okay. I loved houses and decorating, but I was like, well, there's no, that's not practical. People can't afford that. They're not going to pay for it. I'm going to go into health. So literally, that's what drove my decision to become a medical therapist. And then I put myself through college, through scholarships. So I told my story. I didn't give up. I remember sitting with a typewriter and applying for the Optimist Club, the Humanitarian Club, the Kiwanis Club, the Rotary Club. And I got all of those scholarships. And it paid my way through college. I even had room for leftovers and I got to have my own dorm room. I put the two single beds together to make a, a king bed. And I mean, talk about resilience at 15 years old, right? I knew what I wanted to do. Again, I don't know where this fire came in me. You know, do you have that? I want you to find that. Find a moment in your life where you triumph. And I want you to put it in the box there or email me and let me know when was a moment in your life where you felt triumphant, where there was like, yes, I did it. Okay. <clears throat> need to look at that. So going back to the topic of debt, all right, it can cause physical symptoms, headaches, muscle tension, get upset stomach, rapid heartbeat, fatigue, tremors, shortness of breath insomnia, like you're not able to sleep, and it can affect your health. So we have to improve your health to help you get out of debt, but the problem is when you're overwhelmed, you can go into shutdown mode, and that's not good. So you're stuck with this decision. Should I go out, can I go out and get a job, 
or let me just watch this great series on Netflix. And then you kind of have this decision moment. And in that moment of decision, what do you choose? That's where we have to start making choices that are going to get you towards the goal of earning money, of getting out of debt, right? You might say things like, I lose motivation because I feel stuck in a rut. I'm not motivated to cook. I don't want to eat. I don't want to leave the house. I feel alone in my feelings. And then when you feel alone, we tend to isolate and that just makes matters so much worse. Okay, so I want to ask you financially, or just, we can even talk about anything in life. Next week, we're going to talk about the hidden traumas of disappointments, mistakes you've made, things that didn't work out for you. But let's just say for right now, have you made some big mistakes, some financial mistakes that were pretty, pretty devastating? I want to hear about them. Okay, I want to see. And if you have made these big mistakes in your life, I want you to really look at this because we have two options. We, we can we make a choice and we can either fail or we could succeed. And obviously success is great. You get what you want and boom. But it's those failures. It's those mistakes that we make that we actually really learn from and we grow the most from. So right now, I want you to forgive yourself for every mistake you've made. Forgive yourself for every mistake that you've made. And I want you to say this out loud to me. I forgive myself for every mistake I've made. Yeah. How does that feel when you say that? I forgive myself. Because really that forgiveness of the other person that might have hurt you or harmed you, or maybe you're mad at God because he took a spouse too soon, or you got divorced and it was so challenging and why me, right? But can you forgive yourself for that? That's pretty powerful. So I'm going to go into talking about what are your beliefs about money? Where do they come from? What do you believe about having enough? Do you feel blessed? Do you feel abundant in your life? Where did your beliefs come from around money? But then what empowering beliefs do you want to believe about money? So we have to go there. And then what was money like in your family? These are things to think about because they start to create our mindset, our brain wiring, attachment issues as a child. Were your parents there for you or were they pushing away? Did you have a parent who would come home from work and complain about their back hurting all the time or they're tired all the time? And then here you are in your 40s or 50s and you're like, I sound like my mom. I sound like my dad. These were things that were imprinted in us at a very young age, zero to three primarily, but as far as up to seven years old they're saying eight years old, that these patterns can be established in us. <clears throat> so again, I forgive myself for every mistake I've ever made. So let's talk about some of those bad behaviors around money. Okay. Are you an excessive spender? Do you spend in excess? Does shopping make you feel in control? Does it make you feel good? And maybe when the trauma's triggered, and you had an upsetting call, upset call, you were really upset with a call from a family member, did it trigger you to go shopping to self-medicate? These are things that we really need to think about. And I'll teach you a little trick at the end, how to really check in with yourself to feel, why am I doing this behavior? But I'm telling you what, the first step is to really deal with the mindset and awareness of the problem that I am self-soothing right now and I'm going to the store and I'm buying all the stuff even though I don't have the money because temporarily it's going to make me feel good. Or are you a hoarder? Are you the other way where you're excessive saver? You save, 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 and you're afraid to lose it. You're the opposite of spending too much and instead you have hypervigilance. You consider the world to be unsafe. So you protect yourself by hoarding your possessions and your money. 
Again, that's not feeling safe. Sometimes we have a void and we're gonna fill it with stuff and spend money we don't have, or we are going to start saving and hoarding it. Or maybe you are an under earner, and I have a book for that, Overcoming Under Earning, and uh, you can't stop work because the way you feel, you only find your value. Or actually, this is the under earner, is that you're highly educated and you're talented and you're worth so much more, but you give things away for free, or you don't ask for what you're worth, or you don't ask for a raise, for example, or you don't pursue higher positions at work, or you just kind of keep the positions that you're stuck in without asking for it because you might feel undeserving. And this can happen too when you're at a doctor's office. If you feel undeserving, you put the doctor on the pedestal and you're hurting and he didn't answer your question or she gave you the wrong information and you're upset, but you don't speak up for yourself. That is also like an under-earning kind of thing. And some of those things are you give away things, you give away your service, hard time asking for a raise, you don't like money or people who have it, you're proud of your ability to make do with little. Oh, I'm really good at that. Um, I find ways to avoid dealing with money. Or you have that bill to pay and you just keep procrastinating on paying it. That's something too. Then, so we got the under earning and someone who's just very complacent, but then you have the overworker. Someone who is just can't stop working, that's partially me, I admit, um, because the only way we feel of value is by bringing in as much money as you can. And satisfaction, though, it's elusive. It doesn't come to you because you keep striving for, I'm going to work more, I'm going to work more. And that's also a way to avoid yourself. So you're filling yourself up with your work so you can avoid the balance of the other areas of your life. And so this is something to really look at. <clears throat> And then sometimes there's this forever ongoing debt where you feel that owning things or stuff is proof of your worth. And therefore, you reach outside yourself for things to fill you up. And that might be you believe deep down that you don't deserve wealth. I don't deserve it. So you sabotage yourself with charging everything and putting things on the credit card and buying that fancy car. Okay. So it's important to look at, so again, excessive spending. Which one are you? Put it in the text here on the chat. Are you an excessive spender? Are you an excessive saver? Or are you an under earner, overworker? Or do you just live in debt because you feel like material things fill you up? Let me know. And again, say this, I forgive myself for every mistake I've ever made, including the financial debt that you might have gotten yourself into. And sometimes what I think of that as is, for me, it's just a lesson, it's an experience, and it's growth. I'm going to learn from this. It might not be easy, but I'm going to take this and think of it as a college education because I have this love. I'm highly trained, okay? For example, for my therapy license, I only need 20 hours every two years. What do I do? I'm like 200 hours. I love to learn. I love to help people. I love to make you and help you feel better and reach your full potential. And I didn't learn it all in school. I had to go to continuing ed. So I just love to love to love to learn. And sometimes it gets me in debt. So my recent encounter where I took out a big loan, it was a, basically I said it's a life education. So I put a different spin on it and it really did help me change my respect to that money. It was really a, really a beautiful thing. So again, looking at what your beliefs are. So again, I forgive myself for all this. You might have all these bad habits and we're gonna get into the root of those bad habits in a little bit, but I want to have you say these things out loud with me. And I, let's put them in the chat box. Uh, I think these are beautiful. So let me just copy these from my notes here. And you guys can grab them out of there. I do actually suggest that you copy them and put them somewhere in your email or something like that because it actually is very, very beautiful. So the first one is, and I want you to really say this with me and feel it. Money comes to me in expected and unexpected ways. Money comes to me in expected and unexpected ways. Again, you can read these in the chat box. 
And you can take these, copy them, paste them into an email, email them to yourself and say these every day. And you will help raise your vibration. You know, they say the law of attraction, you raise your vibration. I feel good just thinking these words when I'm, I'm worried and money's not coming in or income's been slow, then I'll say, money comes to me in expected and unexpected ways. But it's not enough just to say it, it's really about landing it in your body and feeling those affirmations and seeing yourself. And we'll do a little visualization exercise after, at the end. Uh, I, or money comes to me easily and effortlessly. So just take that in, feel that, that money is coming to you easily and effortlessly. Now, have you had a time in your life where it was easily coming to you? Was it effortless receiving the money? Take yourself there and feel that. Just feel the money landing to you, bringing to you, coming to you, landing in your hands. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly. And I am deserving of abundance in my life. I am deserving. I am deserving of abundance in my life. I am open to receive wealth in many ways. Now, this one, I know even for me, was a little, my heart's a little closed. Like I just, there's this, you know? So I want you to imagine your heart opening. Take a breath there. Imagine your heart opening and saying thou, I am open to receive wealth in many ways. And then, if you're so far away from these, these are not positive at all, I will, I want you to say this, okay? I will get out of debt. I will get out of debt. Or I am beginning to get out of debt. I am developing a strong dedication to living a debt-free life. And again, we're going to be talking about possible childhood traumas that have led you to have these patterns around money. I'm going to talk about that. But again, I'm de developing a strong dedication to living a debt-free life. I am becoming more responsible with my money. I will get my finances in order, okay? I am starting to effortlessly resist spending money on the things that I don't need. You spend money on things you don't need easily? Got to be mindful when you go to that grocery store, and I'll share how I used to do it in a little bit. Uh, uh, let's see. I will keep track of where I am spending money. Yeah. Do you balance your checkbook? Uh, I'm moving towards a debt-free life, and each day I am becoming financially healthy. And I will change my spending habits and take control of my money. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a peek. Let's see. All right, let's get into what is considered childhood trauma, first of all. And some of those is severe neglect, whether it's physical and emotional or your parents were just so busy working that they couldn't be there for you. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, the death of a parent at a young age, that's, that's traumatic. Uh, witnessing the abuse of a parent, a parent with substance abuse in jail or with a psychological disorder, or maybe you were bullied by your siblings and you didn't feel safe. So those are all things that are laying the foundation of trauma in childhood. And I cannot tell you how important the role of developmental trauma is in our lives. As we develop as an adult, it shapes who we are. It shapes our brain. It shapes our habits. It shapes our belief systems and our behavior. So that's why I'm bringing up this hidden trauma series, because often you might have a back pain, you might have a jaw ache or headache or tension and migraines, but I do have to uncover what are those hidden traumas, what falls, what injuries have you had, what emotional hurts and upsets, what relationship issues have you had, how were you raised, were your parents there for you, and did you feel safe? And I said this the other day, and if someone was really emotional about it, but when was the last time you felt safe? When was the last time you really, really felt safe? 
and even around money. And with somatic work, and we're going to be doing this in the group, and it's so profound. I mean, I, like all my clients, I know some of you are on here right now, and you're just making these huge shifts in life. It's more manageable. You're able to check in. You notice the triggers. You're able to move through it, and you're able to be more resilient and have a greater capacity to start creating the life that you want. Because when you're in chronic physical and emotional pain, we get shut down and we can't move forward. And the people who have the most pain and the most persistent pain that won't go away, in my experience as a therapist for 20 years, it has to do with the level of childhood trauma that you've had. And it's, we talked about it in day one of this series on the ACE test. So I'd invite you to take, look that, Google it, or look in the back emails that I've sent you and take the ACE test and see what your numbers are. But hey, we're going to shine awareness on this. We're going to get you out of it. And that's what we're going to be doing in my group. And I do want to put that in here. Again, we have just two spots left. And um, like I said, I think it's really important for you to to grow and to get out of this. And we think we could brute force it and we think we can do it alone, but the reality is we can't do it alone. We need other people. So if you're stuck in a rut, you're isolating and alone, you need to get out of that. And that's where I'm offering just this small intensive group for um, four weeks. It's gonna be really, really great. I'm excited about it. So, okay, so let's go back and talking about trauma. Again, I talked about the effects of childhood trauma specifically, but sometimes it's this pattern of my whole life. I had a horrible childhood. I got married to escape my family of origin and that didn't work out. And I've been in all these abusive marriages and I went 25 years with a narcissist and all of that starts to add up and it, it affects you and, and it brings you down and it can result in chronic health conditions. And that's the angle I take, okay? I'm sorry, but if you're in a boatload of debt, you can't sleep at night, you're in a bad marriage, a stool test to check your gut isn't going to be enough to get you better. I'm sorry, but I see it because people who come to me are usually the people who've tried everything. They don't even want to work with me. They spend all their money and they're frustrated, okay? We need to get your life in order. We need to get you feeling good in your body. So basically, a lot of times when we have all these physical challenges and emotional, we can't self-regulate. We can't soothe. So we go out and we spend all this money that we don't have to fill us up with things. Oh, if I get that, then I'll feel better. If I do that, then I'll feel better. Oh, that'll make me better. I'm going to find this relationship, but oh, I got a date tonight. I'm going to go out and buy the best dress ever. And oh my God, it's $300. But okay, I'm just going to do it just this one time. And then you're in trouble, right? So again, trauma, it causes health conditions. It causes low self-esteem, feeling of undeserving, and really being highly sensitive to stress. That is your nervous system. Because I'll tell you what, when you feel safe in your body, you are not going out and overspending. You are feeling safe, you are happy, you are creative, you are finding hobbies and interests, and having joy doing the things you love. And oftentimes that foundation of that is a dysregulated nervous system. So how I work with people is I help you by co-regulating with you. My clients get to reach out to me whenever they need me and I'm there to pick them up when they're feeling down because our own mindset can really tank us. It can really make us suffer throughout our week, throughout our days. And oftentimes the hardest part for my clients is to actually reach out and ask for help. I don't know if you're like that. Have you had a moment in life where you really needed to ask for help, but you didn't? and you hand and hand, that's a worth issue. That's a, I'm strong and I can pull through this and push through this, but sometimes it's nice just to take that load off your back. Don't you think? Okay, so again, poor mindset, thinking you have very little control over things. You feel unsafe, so you don't take risks, or perhaps you have a negative view of yourself and you see yourself as bad or undeserving. Not good. Not good. So whether you don't think highly of yourself, you know, it can prevent you from being successful. And because you, you, you will lose that ambition. You will. You will lose that ambition. Uh, I do a technique. I go down, I'm crazy maybe, a uh, four-hour round-trip drive to Tucson to an energy healer. And um, it's called neuroemotional technique. The, the tip is NET. 
And I literally drove down there last week and he does all kinds of testing. And basically I didn't really know how deep my self-worth wounds were. And he checked me and basically I had from birth, he could, they muscle test. I don't know if you believe in that or not. I'm, I'm still learning about it. And, and, but I know that every time I go, I feel really good and it's effective for me. So basically he uncovered that from the moment I was born, there was a sense of me feeling unworthy. So he provided me with a tone generator. It's basically an app you can buy and there are healing frequencies. So I'm vibrating at the, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. So I'm not attracting those higher vibrations. So the, the thing with the frequencies, the sound frequencies, I'm kind of digressing here, but the sound frequencies are you basically take one at a hertz that's resonating what you want to be. So if I'm not worthy, I need to find a frequency that I'm vibrating at so that I feel worthy. And then he muscle tests to see how long you need to listen. And I did bring a friend with me down and he told her for her frequency, for whatever her issue was, she needed 72 hours to listen to this sound. And let me, by the way, I'll just grab it. I'll let you hear a little bit of it. So he customizes, oops, the sounds to you. And um, for me, it was 915 Hertz. So she says, oh, Phaedra, it was, I have to listen for 72 hours. I'm like, oh, wow, I've never had to listen to something that long. And he tested me, and sure enough, guess what? He said, I needed to listen to this for 242 hours. So here I am. I've gotten 10 hours, and it's not fun, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to help me get out of this rut I'm in. So you hear this? It's Tone Generator. And again, I don't have a list. I'm looking to get a list. I do all, I do all kinds of things, let me tell you. So I have to listen to this for 242 hours to help me clear and raise my vibration. You know, you could watch Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, but hey, I'd rather just do a sound frequency. Okay, you guys are thinking I'm crazy now. So basically that's kind of the weird things that I do, but I do believe in the work that he does and I drive uh, four hours round trip when I really need a boost, okay? It was a rough week, let me tell you. So, hey, I'm not perfect. I have my ups and my downs. But going back, I had to raise my frequency. That was another method, neuroemotional technique that I'm sharing with you. Um, all right, let me go back here into my notes. So, um, okay, so going back to when you don't think highly of yourself, it really can prevent you from being successful. And you can also lose ambition. And again, I'm talking about this because how do you feel about yourself? Do you have the drive, even though you are in pain with back pain or knee pain, do you have the drive and the belief that you could actually find a job that you love, that brings you joy, that fills you up? Because you know what? If you have a bad back and a bad knee, but you have a place that you look forward to going to and you're happy about going there, chances are you're going to hurt less. And we have a reason to get up and get out of bed in the morning and be somewhere at a specific time. I cannot tell you how important that is, okay? Because we've got to get through this. Because again, if you struggle with PTSD, you could be stuck, you could be frozen and unable to make these changes. And it'll stop your progress and you're not thinking into the future. And then here you are, Groundhog's Day, same thing every day, same thing every day. And I want to help you shift. And I'm not, ex you're not experiencing much with me. You're learning. You're taking it all in by intellectualizing it. But in the small group that I'm going to be doing, we have two spots left. We are going to be experiencing it together. You're going to start to see how you're showing up in the world, in your life. You're going to start to see how maybe you're self-sabotaging and how your emotions might be weighing in and making the decisions. Or perhaps your inner child, your, your five-year-old little girl is running the show and your adult self doesn't have a say in anything and then you're stuck and you're complaining about it and you're upset. And then we do these addictive behaviors to help us feel better, you know? And then sometimes childhood trauma can have some positive effects positive side effects, right? Like you'll have a strong empathy and strong compassion, but it's going to hurt your finances. Maybe you're that type of person who just buys for everybody and gives to everybody and lasts to yourself, but then you're running out of money because you're trying to fill yourself up and get people to like you because you think being generous, you know, is, is good. It is very good to be generous and we can't just hoard all of our money. But sometimes I see that there's a problem of over giving to everybody else whether it's a service, whether it's with your time, because time is money. 
and saying yes when you mean no, that just makes us sicker and makes us heavy, right? And you might worry about everyone else and give to yourself last. And then you get in trouble with that. Or maybe you're too afraid to ask your husband for money and then you deprive yourself and you don't give yourself what you need. Then it's like the opposite, right? And some people in early trauma, they do really well in business because they're trying to fill themselves up and really get their worth out. Really, I'm gonna get as many people to buy my stuff and I'm gonna build this business and I'm gonna build an empire so I can be loved and approved. And that's just the wrong way to go about it. And often top entrepreneurs have addiction problems. In fact, really many of us do. And it could be harmless. It could be like, I'm going to eat ice cream at night. Or it could be, I'm going to go and do excessive shopping. Or I'm going to buy something to fill me up, but then I'm going to return it. So we have to look at how you're showing up, you know. And so again, there, there are times where maybe you were sexually abused and you received gifts or money in order to keep quiet about it. You know, maybe you grew up in a household where money was mismanaged or abused. It's, a, it's possible then to adopt that attitude and that belief system, and it shows up into your adult life. You know, um, maybe you grew up in a household with unhealthy role models around money and relationship, and maybe that influenced your frame of reference for how you're handling money, and now it's showing up in the cycle of your life. You know, maybe you grew up believing that a wife should hand over her salary to her husband. You know, having financial independence, independence as a result, you don't have it. You don't have it. So you're faced with, I should divorce him, but I'm going to stay in this marriage because I don't have money. That is so common. And let me tell you, that hurts. That hurts on a deep level, visceral level, down to the core when you're stuck and you're trapped. It's, you're feeling trapped. So I want to help empower you to get you out of these situations that are not serving you that we just tolerate. And you can go back and look on my blog, on my website. It's, you know, what are you tolerating? We've got to change these. So again, financial instability can manifest itself in several ways from our childhood traumas. And many people go into debt because they can't tolerate the stresses of life. And then they spend the money to cope. Okay. And then you may feel the bills. You know, you see the bills, but you're just, I can't deal with it. And so you don't pay them. Maybe you're unlikely to ask for raises. We talked about that as well. But again, often people, survivors of traumas are often substance abusers, or they find these addictions just to help them feel safe in that moment. And going to that store and buying that stuff might make you feel really good, but the shame and guilt afterwards is gonna kill you over time. It's painful, it's painful. So we have to look at that. Again, money can buy momentarily comfort, momentary, temporary comfort, and it's an escape. So, hey, message me, connect with me. If you're having trouble with this, if you're that person, I need to clear the clutter out of my house. I have so many clothes in my closet. I have no room for new clothes. I can't even fit them in there. Hey, you know, you might want to consider joining the group program that I have going on. It's going to be really pretty awesome. So again, I'll put that in there. Again, we're going to meet for two hours a week, four weeks in a row. And you each get time with me and we're going to help support each other. You're going to set goals and you are going to reach them to get out of the rut that you're in. Okay. So again, last thing is sometimes also we could be triggered. There'll be a trigger that I, I will teach about this in the releasing hitting traumas group, because you might not be aware if you're in your head most of the day and it's this pinball machine and you're analyzing and intellectualizing everything, we've got to get you back into your body so you can make better decisions and make those changes because we're then stuck in this nervous system overload and we can't function. And that's when those maladaptive behaviors happen. Then we have shame, we have guilt, and then it causes more pain, increases our muscle tension, affects our belly. We can't sleep at night. Do you see where I'm going with this? So we got to get the nervous system going so you can poop better so that you can then do the poop test. Because if you're stressed out and you're constipated or you have loose stool all over the place, or you can only eat such little amounts of food, we've got to shift you out of that. And how do we do that is getting you safe in your body. And I have processes that will help you do that. And that's what we're going to do in this small group program with the connection of other people. Okay. So again, 
we're talking about all this child stuff and we're going to go back in talking a little bit more in depth in just a minute, but I don't want you to view yourself as a victim of your childhood. Okay, so how about, hey, my childhood, what I learned from my parents, my survival skills, I got divorced, I was stuck, I was a single mom, you know, that's just going to explain your financial dysfunction. Hey, that's good. Now I know why I am this way, right? And then you start noticing and you have awareness, awareness, you start tuning in. And let me tell you, the somatic work that I do, we're going to be doing in the group is about getting your body to be an antenna for what is right, for what is good, for what is going to help you, and also knowing what is bad. Now, if we're running around like a headless chicken all day long, we're not in our bodies to notice, hey, when that person comes in, I'm holding my breath. Or man, my just stomach just sunk. I am so upset right now. But you're not tuning into it because, oh, he's doing it, I'm mad at him, and, uh, and it's so funny. And if you're, my clients are on here, I I'm, 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 might be talking about you, but oftentimes you like to talk, 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 and tell the story and be in the intellectualizing. And I want to, whoa, whoa, I have to rudely, not rudely, but politely interrupt. I'm so far from rude. I should, I need to be a little ruder, but I'm not. But I would just say, excuse me, okay, wait, I'm going to stop you here. Let's pause for a minute. What's happening inside your body right now? And then they, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. We got to get you in. I'm telling you many of us, so we're not, not in our body. And that's the antenna that's going to tell you to help you make decisions. It's going to help you come from a place of being grounded and solid and making better choices. And that's where people who work with me feel better. They feel more joy and they're getting their lives back. But you know what? When I get you out of your pain story, you have to rebuild your life. And for some of you, I would love for you, if you're hurting and maybe you're disabled, but what if you could get a part-time job? Okay. But even better, what if you can find a part-time job at a place that you really, really love and it fills you up and you actually look forward to going there in the morning and then you forget your problems and you build purpose and meaning in your life. That's part of the way that I work. And it's super important for you that we've got to be living our lives. I don't want you in this disability trap of poor me, I don't have any money. I want you to find a way to get resourceful and do it. Okay, sound good? <laughs> yeah, so we just have to know what our bad habits are and where they came from. So let me start with that. Now, maybe as a child, your parents were frugal and let me know in the, in the box below, were your parents very frugal? Because if so, maybe they needed to keep on a tight budget and they, or they were trying to keep, teach you a lesson, you know, maybe that was it, or maybe they were selfish and they were putting themselves first and you really never got your needs met. You know, maybe you felt like they denied you as a kid. So what happens when your parents don't give you what you need and you feel denied? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. As an adult, you just might be overspending to compensate. I didn't have it as a child. I'm going to give it to me now. You know, you might do binge spending, right? And that is sometimes often a response to feeling deprived as a child. You know, we've all, you know, haven't we all heard stories about strict parents whose kids rebelled and went crazy and just got in trouble and did all kinds of wild things. And perhaps you're acting out with your money choices because of your parents' cruelty. You never know, just things to think about. So I'm shining the flashlight on curious. Hmm, let me think about this and see if this is something that I'm doing in my life. Oh, I'm spending frivolously because yeah, I remember my parents wouldn't let me have anything. So then you have to reframe it and you have to give yourself permission. And maybe once a month, I will do something really nice for me. Maybe like yesterday, I had a really hard day. I had a hard day. My parents were in court. Okay, they got divorced in 95 and they're still dealing with custody, alimony, child support. I'm just like, oh, I'm my blood boil. And I was crying and I was in tears and the whole nine yards, but I drove by Starbucks and I was like, do I want, I don't want coffee. I want a nice drink. I want a guava lemonade or white tea. And it was like, you know, five bucks. It's just stupid. I can go and I have it at home. I can make it. But I just decided I'm going to make myself feel good. I'm going to do something nice for me. And I went and got the iced tea. And it felt really good. And it was just something pleasurable in that moment, pleasant that I can do for myself during all the trials and tribulations and the trauma that I had yesterday. It was, it was beyond traumatic. Thanks, mom. You might be watching. <laughs> 
So going back, were your parents frugal? But then on the other side, were you spoiled? Did you get everything you needed? And my parents were very good to me. We'd get to go to the toy store and pick out one toy and it was great, you know, but there were times where it got harder and I didn't know if I'd get the basic needs taken care of. So I've kind of got a mix of this, but did they spoil you? And perhaps, you know, your parents were deprived and didn't have what they needed as a child. And then in response, they give to you and they overcompensate for their poor childhood and they give to you. And then you grow up living a life of abundance and not wanting anything. Does that happen to you? You know, so now you feel entitled to have this luxurious lifestyle. And, you know, kids who are, who are spoiled can often grow up to expect that they can and they should still have whatever they want. And that's a huge emotional turmoil. I don't know if any of you watching are having, have had that experience where you've had so much and maybe that you've had quite a loss. And then you start to, you're living large because my parents gave me everything I should be able to as an adult. And then you're racking up the debt. See where this is going? So again, your parents might have hoarded and were very frugal, or maybe that they spoiled you to death, or maybe they were people who just gave to everybody. They gave above and beyond to charity, and you feel like you have to keep going and going. You know, maybe your parents grew up poor. And like for me, I did not have, um, I got scholarships for college, and I was so appreciative when I grow up, I'm giving to college applicants. I'm gonna give you know, a scholarship, whether it's $500, I'm going to give to a high school student who was just like me to help them get to school. You know, but maybe you had a parent who was really poor, especially the depression errors, and then they were hoarding, or perhaps they gave too much. And that's where you have to think about, are you giving your last dime to your children because of wanting them to appreciate you, not wanting them to suffer like you suffered. We have to think about these. When you give more money away than you can really afford to give out of obligation or guilt, and you can't seem to say no, it can hurt you. That can be a hidden thing underneath both your physical and emotional pain and your stress. That's why I'm doing this series, The Hidden Traumas. And again, it's easy to let your emotions get the best of you which can make you say yes too often and giving more than you can actually afford. So I want you to keep in mind if you are doing that or if you have done that. And again, I forgive myself for the mistakes I've made. We are shining the spotlight on this behavior. So the next time you're taking your credit card out to go buy something at the store that you don't need, perhaps you can tie this in to how you were raised or some deep rooted money beliefs, okay? Maybe your parents never taught you about money. Like you're money foolish and you do things like overspending or under saving or avoid investing and planning, you know, financial planning for your retirement. We have to, we have to save money for when we're older because after a certain age, you just can't quite work as well as you did anymore. So this is important. Or perhaps, you know, you, you don't know enough about money, but there are so many great, great books about money. And I'll just dive into this. It's not an advertisement for Dave Ramsey, but I did do Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University because there were times I would go to the mall and I would buy about $1,000 worth of stuff. And it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I was making good money at the time, but it was stupid. It was very stupid. And now I can't get rid of it because I was like, oh, I spent so much money on that. Do you guys know what I mean? And um, so I got involved with Dave Ramsey and I got his little financial peace program. It's like, it's very inexpensive. Local churches have it. It is Christian based. Local churches have it. You can meet once a week on it. But the key part of it is doing your budget. And he has forms for you to do. And it has every type of thing you could possibly spend your money on to budget on. So you take your gross income and you divide it up. And so, for example, what I would do is I gave myself $80 a week to go grocery shopping for food. But then I would make a game of it because he has this thing called blow money. So if you save money, you can make a little pile that is blow money that you can just throw away, blow it away on whatever you want. So I would make a goal with myself. My budget would allow $80 at the grocery store, but I'm gonna shop coupons and I'm gonna do store sales and I'm only gonna spend $60 so that $20 could go, you know, I could go to a concert this weekend. 
So that's how I would work. So it was just a fun way to get into it. And then my best friend got into it and then we'd save money. Like we'd go to a concert and we'd like bring our own drinks and we'd drink them in the car before we walked into the venue. So we don't have to spend $15 on a drink. I mean, we call them gazelle teenies, Dave Ramsey, if you guys have heard of him. He's like gazelle intensity. You're going to get gazelle intensity to pay off your debt and do a debt snowball. So anyway, he has a very comprehensive program. I highly recommend it for you and uh, can't speak enough about it. So again, if you haven't been educated in money, get yourself educated. Dave Ramsey is a pretty basic way to go to start and you can do it in community in a group and you're not alone. Okay. Maybe your mother was dependent. Maybe uh, whether she was just married to your father or was in multiple relationships one after another, your mom, you know, was she taken care of or did she not have to worry about money. We have to think about that. Um, maybe she was a, she wanted the Prince Charming. Maybe there was a man to rescue her. Maybe you are still waiting for your Prince Charming, <laughs> right? So why should you have to struggle if your mom didn't, right? Maybe she was she was dependent on somebody to to pay for everything, and maybe that's what you're relying on. And maybe you're in a marriage that's not serving you, but you're afraid to leave because you've been dependent on your husband and you don't know how to survive. And I know many women who do it, and we're talking about this in the Recharge Your Life Summit that's coming up here at November 7th, 2019. We're gonna be talking about this, and it's real, okay? And then really one of the last ones, were your parents divorced, okay? Um, it's unfortunate, but so many families go through this type of thing, and it's really, really hard, and it could create all kinds of psychological issues in kids, right? And it also includes this fuel for poor money decisions because you're you're seeing how it's run, how it's not run, you're not having enough money, you don't know what's going on, you have a single parent, they're thriving, they're trying to survive, they're trying to figure it out. And what were your beliefs created around your parents' divorce? That is something to look at, you know? You're determined to live happily ever after. You know, it's not a bad thing, but it could help, it could lead you to jump into marriage too soon, to buy a house, maybe start a family prematurely for the wrong reasons. I don't know if you've been in that boat. Um, you know, maybe you're living beyond your means, racking up debt, you're just under constant financial stress, or you ultimately just, you have the divorce and you can't handle it. And it's just marry someone else and it's this vicious cycle uh, looking for someone to rescue you. And I admit, I grew up in a small townhouse and there were five of us and it was this narrow, tall townhouse and I didn't like it. It was, it was loud. There was like, I, to this day, I have to feel like I have to have a podcast on or an interview on or something because it was so noisy growing up. My brain, I feel this is my story is wired to that. So when I was back in the day, it was, it was actually before the, it was like a year before the accident. And I decided I'm going to buy a two story house. Like I had this dream. I wanted this perfect house. It had to be this color and it was two story. So here I am just me in a 1700 square foot house that I don't use most of the room and it's too big and I feel lonely in. And I can't take it back because I purchased it. I'm invested in it. I mean, I could, I could do changes, but I'm not going to go through all that. And I'm just going to accept it. But my little girl in me didn't like the townhouse I grew up in. I wanted something bigger. And then I thought I needed it and I got it. And I'm like, okay, this, this is too much. It's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> all right. So any questions as we're talking? So I want to go into, um, so we talked about those reasons about parents, you know, and what they might have instilled in us. And these are the true things, these hidden traumas. And we need to look at that. And then I want to give you some practical tips to help you. You know, and then often, so we have these hidden child, we, these traumas, like we, it's called developmental trauma, which then can cause attachment issues of, do we feel safe in the world? Do we feel safe relating to other people? Are we needy? Are we dependent? Or are we fiercely independent? We have to look at that. And what our mental health is like, because honestly, mental health problems are three times higher among people who have debt depression, anxiety, psychotic disorders, right? We're among common mental illnesses that people have experienced. And um, we had a family member, friend, who was very wealthy, lived a very, very good life, traveling all the time, had a condo on the ocean, and he was a victim of Bernie Madoff. 
and he literally lost everything. And as soon as he lost everything, he went into Alzheimer's dementia like that. He was in such financial stress and shock that we lost him. Okay. And then there's suicide that can happen. There's a higher risk of suicides. Don't do that. Call 1-800-SUICIDE line. Okay. Um, and again, it's really just getting help. And I hope that you can find the help that we're talking about here today because it is possible. Okay. Um, so again, depression, anxiety, we know that all financial health is tied to mental health, you know, and um, we really have to become more resilient. But I'm hoping that I can inspire you today just to look at and you can shine the awareness on your behavior and you can catch yourself and your adult self can say, hey, I don't need this anymore. I'm smart. I'm wise. I want to get out of the ditch that I'm in. I'm going to start behaving and taking the right steps to be financially secure. Okay. And it, debt is a solvable issue, but if you're struggling with depression and anxiety, your mental health issues could stop you from being able to problem solve. And maybe you're drowning in debt and paying for the treatment to get help is not available. So these are things that we really have to look at. I hope none of you are in that situation, right? But no matter what comes first, we have to deal with our emotions, our nervous system, our mental health, and the debt. And so using those simple affirmations that I talked about in the beginning will be helpful in that moment to give you some relief. And you can also do some EFT tapping to those affirmations. And again, uh, let's just pick with those, you know, I will get out of debt. I will get out of debt. And you can start with the negative, man, I'm in so much debt. I'm in a lot of debt and I'm really, really scared and I don't know what I'm going to do, but maybe, maybe I can get out of debt, right? I can get out of debt. I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to get my money and finances in order. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. So using the affirmations with the EFT tapping, and if you don't know how to tap, you can go on to YouTube and watch a video and follow it and then use your affirmations with it. It's really, really beautiful. So I want to play a game now uh, with you, and I want you to visualize something that, a life that you want, that if you had, if you were out of debt, what would that look like? I want you to dream big. Maybe you have a financial goal or a dream that you'd like to accomplish. And I want you to visualize what an abundant life would look like for you. And for me, one of my examples was I wanted to own a oceanfront home in San Diego in La Jolla, right? 10 million minimum, right? And there, my brain almost couldn't believe it. It couldn't think it. So I really had to work and I had to get creative and I had to feel it and experience it. And then I visualized myself in the hot tub with the fireplace right here. And I'm looking out at the ocean and I look into the bedroom and there's a fireplace in there. You know, these are all material things, but I just realized I couldn't think big. I couldn't think bigger. I was stifled. So I want you to think big. Maybe you don't even just have to have an oceanfront home. Maybe you can have a home in the mountain and a home on the lake. Just play with me here. You know, and then that's grandiose thinking, but maybe, just maybe, you want your house painted inside. Maybe you want to get your house painted. So just visualize where you're at right now, looking at those walls that they are painted. And sit with that. And you might be, no, I can't. Your head's getting involved. That is your nervous system being activated. And that's what we are going to talk about in the Release Hidden Traumas group. We're going to get you, if you're up here and you're in your stress and you're anxious and can't sleep and unhappy or you're depressed and you're exhausted, I'm never going to get out of debt. You're not going to get there being up here or down here. You need to be in here. So when we do the group, you're going to be getting into this place because I'm going to facilitate and guide you because these, this little thing here, this lightning bolt represents your thoughts, your triggers, your activation, and your stress. And they pull you up out of it and they get you stuck on high and you can't function. You can't think straight. Fear is ruling your life or you're shut down and stuck and watching Netflix all day. 
So we're going to work on keeping in that group. So again, visualizing. And if you can't do it right now, we're all together. I want you to just practice. Just practice doing it. And just see how big you can go. Because in order for big changes to happen, we need to use big visualizations. And it's not limited to seeing an abundant life. And it's not just that. It's using your other senses. So you can see an abundant life, but I want you to feel what it would feel like to be in that fancy sauna or that hot tub, right? Um, what is it here? What sounds do you hear? What do you sense? How are your emotions in your body? Those are things that I want you to come up with tonight, okay? And send me an email. Let me know what you came up with and what you did. And again, I want you to write out, if you are an abundant life, you are out of debt, your money situation was okay. I want you to feel like, how would that look? How would your life look? How would it feel? How would it sound? How would it taste? What foods would you be eating? How would you feel? How do you want to feel when you get out of debt? Take that feeling in and act as if now. Fake it till you make it, right? And then this will help you get closer too. Because right now, again, if you're up here activated or you're shut down here, you're not really feeling and you're resigned. You're shut down. But this is the place of creativity and this is nervous system regulation. And I want to help you get there. And that's why we have two spots left for that group. All right. And then... Also, if you want to be abundant, you know, we're going to talk about feeling it, visualizing it, and dream big, you know, open up those uh, home improvement flyers that you get in the mail, and just picture yourself there doing it. But not only that, I want you to write out the names of the people that you will impact when you're abundant. How will you feel? I am happy. I always feel good. I can take care of myself. I can get the medical help that I need. I will help others. I will give to my children. I am ready. I am ready to live my life to its fullest. You know, and you have to believe it. You have to believe in yourself. Okay. So here's what to do about it when you go to the store now. So we got you into that visualizing. And you can write out the goals, write out simple, succinct goals. And we're going to do this in the Release Hidden Trauma group. And I'm going to hold you accountable for it, that you have to do it. Because, you know, you set a goal and you don't do it and you self-sabotage. I don't know. I do that often. But I have a coach, so he keeps me accountable. But here's what we're going to do. If you suspect that there is a traumatic event that is behind your consistently poor financial decisions, I want you to check in with your emotional state when you're paying your bills, when you're going to the store or ordering something that you need off, you know, online. I want you to tune into your emotional state because awareness is going to give you strength. And then the opportunity to make better decisions and to make better decisions based on your adult self, right? Because when emotional triggers cause you to make purchases that you don't need or you can't afford, you are giving your power away to someone or something else. I want you to take your power back, okay? So before shopping, before charging something, ask yourself these questions, okay? And I'm gonna put them in the chat. Grab them, put them in your email, email them to yourself with the affirmations, got it? How do I feel right now? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy and I'm like, just got the phone call with my mother and I'm upset. I'm going to go on Amazon and I'm going to buy something and I'm, I'm raging and I'm just like, oh, God, let me just, this is going to feel better. It's been on my mind. I needed to buy this. I don't have the money, but I'm just going to buy it. So tune in. How do I feel right now? What's causing me to react this way? Why do I feel I need to buy this? Is it a want or is it a need that I need it? Do I really need it? How will I feel after I buy it? How will I feel when I have to pay for it? Because when you have a sense of accomplishment, you know, so I want you to start paying off your small debt that you can be able to afford things easily. That buying that expensive toilet paper <laughs> isn't going to be too expensive for you to purchase. 
right? And there are some people that are literally in this where you have to pinch pennies. And I want to help you get out of that. And again, if we look at our mindset, we look at our feelings of what we're doing and that moment of just, I can't, and you go into that fear and you go into that doubt and you're beating yourself up. I want you to pause and say, I can, I can do this. That's what I want for you. And then, you know, paying off your small debt first. Now they say pay off your high interest first, but you know, say you have $10,000 due, but you only have a hundred to pay it. It's not even going to make a dent. You might, why am I even bothering paying for it? I'm just going to go buy my stuff with this on hundred dollars. But maybe you only had a $200 debt and you throw a hundred dollars at it. It's going to help it go faster. You're going to see these little rewards. You're going to be more motivated to actually pay off the debt. So it's these little mind tricks. This boost of your mood can help you stick to your budget. So we have to play with these little things. Um, and paying off debt is more than just numbers. It's a mental game. It takes mental strength. It requires hard work and self-control. But that means we have to get your nervous system regulated. And that's what I'm all about. So start tuning in this week, this weekend, what your patterns are around shopping and spending money. Again, hard work, self-control, we've got to do it. Pay off your small debts first and give yourself a chance to celebrate with a milestone. Go buy yourself that iced tea that you wanted, things like that. Um, and then it'll help you get that motivation to reach your financial goals. And if you're disabled or you're in pain and you're hurting, you know, you can either do two things. Oh, there's no way I could wait, work, Phaedra. You could ask for help. Okay. And then you could maybe go and get a small little job. Okay. Money is energy and there are people who need it, maybe like yourself. So I don't mind when I'm working hard at doing interviews and building a summit to pay a woman in need who needs money to provide for her family to help me clean my house because I'm busy doing other things for the world to help and, and create things in the world. So to me, the priority isn't mopping my floors, but this person really, really needs it because her husband's on kidney dialysis. So when I give her money, I feel good doing that because I'm getting help, but I'm helping her. And she's so grateful. And that's the way money exchange should be. It is gratitude. It is a flow of energy. You're giving to this person and then you're going to reward them. They're going to give back to you. It's a nice exchange. Okay. So what did you guys think? I went a little longer tonight. This was a big topic. It's real. There's a lot hidden underneath death. So let me peek again. Yeah. So I'm going back to the question about um, a beautiful soul whose husband passed away and you're 62. So, uh, and again, this might be, you know, you have to think about how you feel when I say this. 62 is young. I know because I work with 85 to 102. 62 is very, very young. You can still work. You can get a job that gives you purpose and a sense of worth. And hear me out. You can find love and partnership again. My mother did it. If she can do it, anybody can. Okay. I have many clients in their 60s who fall in love. I have many clients at 70 who've gone to their 50th high school reunion and found love. And now they're traveling all over the world with somebody. So that can happen. Again, once the grieving process comes. So this, uh, this series is definitely hitting home for you, I'm sure, my dear. Okay. And money seems to be going fast. So you have to budget yourself. And that's where the Dave Ramsey thing comes in and he gives an envelope. So I go and he has a cute little wallet with it that you could buy that has envelopes in it and it works. But you put $80 when you go to the grocery store and you play a game with yourself. And how can I not spend all that money? I'm going to go in, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to only buy what's on that list right? But then this is, it might feel like scarcity and being really strict with yourself, but you're going to start to see the results and you're going to start to feel safe and the money's going to hang around longer. You just have to be mindful about where you're spending your money, why you're spending it, and what's that purpose behind getting the object. Or could you just borrow something from a friend and pay them back? You know what I mean? Can you have a friend, you know, maybe a friend wants to clean their house. This is probably all of you. I know who I am that way is that we want to clean out that room. that's just messy and it's junk. Maybe you can bring a friend and maybe they need the money and you won't feel guilty asking them for help if you pay them. 
So you're helping her, she's helping you, and then you get your room cleaned out and you have space and you're happy. That again is going to shift your vibration. So again, maybe you can go offer to get a, create a little job like an organizing business or help people who can't drive. I know after an accident, I couldn't drive, it killed me. So maybe you can help somebody by driving them somewhere. There's definitely things that you can do. Uber is very popular. Lots of people in their 60s are doing Uber. Not to say that's safe, but there's ways to do it. You know, you have to work around what you're comfortable doing. Okay. So any last minute questions? Sharon's on. White Iris, you love flowers, don't you? Lotus petals, that's her email, I love it. <laughs> and Lisa, hi, is this making sense to you, my dear? Lisa got to come here and we did an intensive treatment. It was amazing. All right, let's see. I wanna just peek and make sure I got everybody's questions. But really, thank you so much for being here. And this is the hidden traumas of debt. And just think about your behavior. Where did it come from? So much of it is mindset, mindset around money. That's really important that you can take control of this. When you're falling into that pit and you feel bad, really reach for a positive affirmation, do some tapping, really tune into why am I spending this money? What is the root of this? How do I wanna feel when I'm spending this money? How do I want to feel when I'm paying for groceries at the grocery store? How do I want to feel when I'm paying my bills every month, when I'm paying my mortgage? How do I want to feel when I go to buy new clothes? These are all things to think about. 